Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So what can I say about this bike? This is the type of bike that occasionally will come into somebody's life and it's one of those bikes where you may not want to spend the money restoring it to concourse condition but you might want to get it to a rideable condition and this is what this video is all about. This is a 1950s Humber town bike. Now it would never have come with those drop handlebars and as you can see it's stiff, it's janky, it's deteriorated as you can see here, rubber is, is perished and worn out. This is this type of thing, you know, gear's not working, brakes not working, the whole thing, I mean even here that you can see, you could, it's, it's seized, it's, it's absolutely unrideable. Could have been tucked in a shed somewhere, tucked behind a shed somewhere, even tucked under a shed somewhere, this type of bike. But it might have been great great grandfathers or great great grandfathers it's one of those bikes that can be passed down through generations never be used deteriorate even more gradually get in a worse and worse state to the point where it's really only fit for the bin but occasionally you'll get a, a owner and they just want it rideable so this is a video all about detailing and getting that bike ready to ride you can see like the brake pads here completely perished away completely deteriorated as soon as you hit the brakes with this, even if you could have pulled those cables, the brakes would have just exploded on you and you, you wouldn't have stopped anyway. So we've got a, a stay off here on the mud guard. So as we're stripping it down, we're collecting all these parts together. And you can see there, you can see why that wasn't pedaling back. It's, it's, it's solid, you know, it needs an awful lot of work. But you can steadily, over the course of a period of time, get these bikes back riding again for actually very little cost, especially if you're doing it DIY. If you're paying a shop like me, then obviously you're gonna incur those costs. I mean, this, this bike took us over a day's labor to do, so it wouldn't have necessarily been cheap to do, but it's a whole lot cheaper than going online and finding new old stock parts, which may take you several years to find, involve an awful lot of cost. I mean, anyone who's ever restored a road bike of, of the 50s, 60s, 70s will know that parts for that period of bike are colossally expensive when you can find them and do take some time to collect up so you can you know get the bike where you can see from this that we can get it riding so we're stripping this bike down all the way along the time i'm sort of noticing problems figuring out in my mind what needs solving what problems are going to need sorting out and initially you can see that these mud guards are all over the place and need sorting out we need to solve the brakes not working, gears not working, seize nuts and bolts. So plenty of WD-40 as we're stripping it down, getting it apart. Old cables that we're going to need to replace. We need to replace all the cables on this. Now this was intriguing. Not the quill there, which is normally enough to get that handlebar stem out, but it was a real pain to get out. Initially I thought that hadn't dropped, and anyway, eventually got it out. But then we actually realised as we were then stripping down the forks that the actual quill itself, which has got like a U shape you can see here, they are completely rusted through and just snapped off the bottom of the stem. So that was that, that stem is toast. We could have put a new groove in, but we don't know how far in that stem the rust goes. So in this instance, fortunately for us, we had one of those stems and uh, we were able to replace it. These fittings here, I wanted to hang on to these because there was literally only these fittings at the front and you can see that one that's mounted on the frame to the left of where I'm just grinding the old bolt out there. That was on the bike and I'm not really sure what that did. I don't know whether this bike had been converted from rod brakes to cable brakes or quite what that fit was on there. Maybe if you've got one of these old Humber bikes and you're looking at this video, you can drop us a comment to say exactly what that is. But you'll see the way that I used that, utilized it when we do the rebuild. Now everything's going through the ultrasonic cleaner and then we're using wire wool and soapy water here to clean off the rust. What we described in our recent Triumph video, which I'm sure we'll put a link to at some point in this video, we always detail around the rust. So the rust isn't the part we're detailing. We're cleaning off that bleed of rust and then we effectively detail what's left. You'll especially notice this on the frame when we clean that up with the teacup and polish, the actual what little paint is left on that frame absolutely pops out. You'll see in the before and afters, this bike really stands out by the end. And like I say, initially you look at it and think it was fit for the bin. So you can see here, again, wire wool, cleaning off the rust. You get what chrome is left, left, and you can really shine that up. And then with a good polish, you can protect that from having water 
sitting on that bike and causing it to go rusty again and obviously a bike like this you're not going to be using it every day it's a bit like a classic car it is old it is never going to ride like a modern bike it is really an occasional bike special occasions riding out to the to the pub on a sunday afternoon and just enjoying great grandfather's bike once more and that's what this is all about so we cleaned up the pedals as well they were quite stiff and janky so we cleaned them up new grease new bearings and you'll see as this spins in a moment what a difference it, it you know this kind of work really can make to new or to old parts creating them to new you'll see in a second when we put this all together how easy this spins in comparison with the old one it can make a vast difference so fresh shimano grease inside a little bit of copper slip on the threads of the cover there a little bit of copper slip on the bolt that actually holds this to the bike just here and you saw it just spin in the vice what a difference it made and now you can see the before and after of left and right pedal what difference it makes so everything's gone through the ultrasonic cleaner everything's been cleaned up we're now just giving it a little grease up we use our various greases and lubricants and which we've explained in other videos and you can see how you can really make these old parts absolutely work to their best that's left you know best of the life that's left in them i suppose you could say with that but this this little roller here was for the cable we're actually reutilizing that i don't think these cables were even sitting in the right place on the frames as they would have been but i think it's all to do with that drop handlebar conversion you've got to remember that a 70 year old bike would have had a you know probably a lot of work done in its first 10 years and then probably the last 60 years it's just been left to rot this was intriguing this was a little leather strap you often see that on old pubs and you can see that those bits i chunked off were mud they were thick mud where it had done its job it kept that hub clean i think this might have been an old dog collar or something because it even had holes for a strap but we cleaned all those out re-cleaned that up and that was we that was kind of a thing that was part of the historic value of the bike and the history of the bike that we decided to put back on now with the wheel itself the bearings actually in the hub felt okay this is a dynamo hub so originally this bike would have had lights on it from the factory they're all long since gone the dynamo hub had a cover on it that was a little bit broken and i could tell that this bike had had work done on it in the past on the wheels stainless steel spokes the nipples things about them that told me that this bike wheel had probably been rebuilt at some point in its life with the broken dynamo there it was a piece of plastic on that broken the fact the bearings felt okay and it was changing gear okay we actually elected not to do the bearings in this wheel sometimes you're just better off to leave well alone and just act a little bit caution to the brief of the project which is to get it you know road ready and rolling again so obviously the tires completely perished inner tubes completely gone new tires new inner tubes but we did fit inner tubes with the woods valve which is the original valve that this bike would have had uh, you know this is long before presser and schrader valves so woods valve in there tuck that little leather cover back on that was actually really quite supple still that was a nice little bit of leather that and then we cleaned up the headset and you'll really see on the bottom one here in a moment this one what difference a little bit of wire wool and a little cleanup can make with your servicing and everything else so you can really see how things are just beginning to come along so if you're new to our channel do make sure you like this video subscribe and if you've got any information on this humber bike please do drop a comment in the comments below because although this has now gone out of the shop it's still interesting for our own curiosity and other people reading the comments to know a little bit of history about these bikes and everything else now the headset on this bike the badge on the headset tube there actually had humber by royal appointment to his majesty the king so this is before in the uk we, we've got the royal family this is before queen elizabeth this is the previous king of, of the country it was by royal appointment to him the queen was coronated in 1952 so this bike is pre that period of time and we believe it to be 1950 so you can see it's it's a very old bike so now once we've done all the cleaning up we put the wheels on because we knew the mud guards were bent and higgledy piggledy and the rear one needed work and i wanted to just straighten them up as you can see there get them fit in the shape of the tire a little bit better getting the stays in the right place just so that once the bike was fully rebuilt it would actually all sit in the right place now this stay had snapped straight off a little bit of rust on there but i checked the length and as you can see i'm doing there and i knew that if i welded it back on it would actually all sit in the right place still anyway so that's what we did we're just cleaning up the old rust here on the mudguard itself 
and then a little bit cleaning up on the stay ready for welding and then we just give that a little tack of weld didn't need an awful lot because obviously it's quite a small little piece but you can see there just weld it up a little bit of primer a little bit of top coat just protects it from the elements for the future if the bike you know is used in the rain and it'll soon rust through so we're just protecting that and then we just refit this mud guard just to make sure it's all nice before removing the wheels and now we work on the detailing of the frame so you can see how tired this frame is just give it a little wash down yeah we, we clean all that off we've got the detailing brush there and the big softy brush to clean it off airline blowing little parts off and just gradually work our way through the bike now this bottom bearing cup wouldn't come out when we tried to strip the bike down so again we decided to leave well alone but we cleaned all the grease out from behind there while we were washing the frame down then we're almost ready now for the sort of the, the, the special source of cleaning it all which is polishing and tea cutting the frame so we dry that all off with a microfiber towel before this is the tea cut we use it's a british product naturally for a british frame why wouldn't you <laughs> but we put a little bit of tea cut on there this tea cut what what it does it it sort of cleans off road film and any ingress on an original paint so we use that on the original paint now what we did do on this front mud guard was we actually tea cutted it but we used wire wool because the tea cut itself wouldn't touch that rust we knew this was a bit harsh in terms of the paint but this isn't like a car the paint that's left on there that creamy white is so deteriorated anyway so dry that by wire wool in it like i say we always try to clean through the rust so we try to polish what's left so by cleaning the rust off we got left with what paint was there which we could then tea cut polish clean up and make that front mud guard really night and day from how it came into the shop I actually think this bike's been painted at some point in the past. I don't think that was original paint because on the rear mud guard there was a little bit of that sort of cream white coming through on the tail end of it. There were no logos on the bike, so I think this might at some point have been repainted. But once we've done that tea cutting process, that's probably one of the lengthiest processes in restoring a bike like this. Now we use the resin polish. This is what protects what's left from the elements, the rain, you know, the water will sit on this polish. It protects that bike for the future, makes it more rideable, and it really pops out what paint is left because, as you know, as we explain, we, we clean between the rust. It's what's left that is important. So you can see how that reflection's coming out. I mean, it's amazing, really, to think this bike came up this well. It really, really did come up absolutely amazingly. As I've mentioned, you know, do subscribe to the channel. Do send us some comments and like each video and have a look at our back catalogue. We've worked quite hard on the channel this year. I'd like to thank Simon for all his efforts editing all these videos. They take an awful lot longer to edit than to produce. And now we're just getting these bearings back in. Plenty of grease and oils. New cotter pins in there because obviously the old ones I tapped with a hammer to get them out. So they're something that's still available and readily available. So a couple of new cotter pins. We kept all the costs down as low as possible for parts because that was the whole essence of this was that it was a full detail and service to get this bike in usable condition so we had the bearings plenty of bearings on the bike you can see how i mean look how free that is i mean it's amazing isn't it really when you think how tight that was when it came in i couldn't even turn it backwards even this chain is the original chain through the degreasing bath cleaned wire walled cleaned right up it had very little stretch in it so it was fine to reuse and what a difference even that is incredible new stem here which is going in so we had the stem costs the handlebar grip costs, the cable costs, bearings, tires, inner tubes, but that was pretty much it. There were a few nuts and bolts and a few, you know, auxiliary parts that we had to fit. But, you know, we did this for, it really, it was mainly labor involved in this bike. You know, the actual costs of parts were negligible, really, especially in terms of the, the condition the bike was in when it came in. It really shows just how much you can do just with mechanical sympathy, mechanical knowledge, and giving a bike the once over. You just have to be patient. I mean, like I say, this bike took us over a day to do, so, you know, in terms of labor, you have to be patient with your time, just work your way through. But, you know, even a bike of this standard, you can get it rolling again in and use it once more. Now, like I say, this fitting's the one that intrigued me. I don't really know what that originally did, or even if it would have originally been on that crossbar. But we refitted that because we decided to use that as a cable guide because the 
rear brake just hung off the bike anyway when it arrived. And the rear derail, like the Sturmey Archer three-speed hub there, the, the cable for that, sort of looped down and ugly on the bike. So we made this cable up to fit where we'd reset those fittings because it's a double-ended cable. And you can see there, once we did that, a little bit of adjustment and we got our three gears back and uh, it's changing gear nicely. You can see here how I used that, that guide for the brake and the rear cable. And then we're just resetting up the rear brake, a little bit of adjustment, so it's got new brake pads, new cable, working perfectly. In goes the front, same, new pads, new cable, working perfectly. And before you know it, we've now got a bike with good brakes, good gears. Yeah, it's really, really beginning to come along. So a little bit of oil on the chain. We always do that last because obviously, you know, I might have to take it on and off or do things with it. And a little bit of air in the tyres and this bike is now absolutely ready to ride and give it a little bit of clean up with a silicon detailer just to give it that final little pop out and you can see here from the before and afters what an incredible difference i think even me and simon after filming this was surprised so thanks for watching we're glad you're here and please do subscribe and we'll see you again next week